Week 2, Lesson 8. Tintin. George Prosper Remy was born in 1907 and died in 1983. He was better known by his pen name, Herge. Herge was a Belgian cartoonist working for the newspaper La Vigentem Cecile. I'm sorry, I know I pronounced that wrong. The name translated to the 20th century, as in it was called the 20th century. He wanted to create a comic that helped young boys learn about the world. Hirsch is one of the most influential comic book artists in European culture, and is possibly the most influential. The majority of the work he's known for is one series, about the most famous Belgian boy reporter in fiction, Tintin. His first tale was retroactively entitled Tintin in the Land of the Soviets. Let's take a look. Now, I can objectively say that this book is terrible. Hirsch wasn't pleased with it either, and it's easy to see why. It was officially written when he was a teenager before he developed the art style that he'd become known for. It's not a fun read, it's not pleasant to look at, but academically, there's some value in dissecting it. The first panel is completely text. At Le Petit XX, we are always eager to satisfy our readers and keep them up to date in foreign affairs. We have therefore sent Tintin, notice the large bold lettering of Tintin, one of our top reporters to Soviet Russia. Each week we shall be bringing you news on his many adventures. And be the editor of Le Petit XX guarantees that all photographs are absolutely authentic, taken by Tintin himself, and aided by his faithful dog, Snowy. We as readers know that Tintin isn't real, but the magazine editor asks us to treat him as such. This is a conflict of what we now know to be true and what we are being told. Our brain is absorbing that information. The panel also acts as a title. The word Tintin is larger than the rest, and immediately catches the reader's eye. Panel 2. We see an old man with a pipe. Safe journey! Take care, and be sure to keep in touch. We don't know who the old man with a pipe is, but it's a safe assumption that he's Tintin's editor. On the right side of the panel, we see a male with a hat, which, judging by his dog, is Tintin. On the fourth panel, we see Snowy say, I've been told they have fleas there. It's not clear if Snowy can talk or is just thinking this. Tintin doesn't react to it. Our minds go back to the first panel of text. The text is targeting us. It wants us to keep to date with modern affairs. Dogs do not talk in modern affairs. So, our mind takes this information it lets us go right back to the fourth panel and continue reading. So Tintin falls asleep, and we go to the next page, where one of the worst drawn characters we'll see in this course begins monologuing. I think the dirty little bourgeois is asleep. Time for action. He must never get to Russia. He'd report what's going on. This in here will stop him for a long while. If not, for keeps. One of the best remedies yet discovered for curiosity. I've got just one minute to reach safely the front of the train. Happy landings, my young friend. We then see Tintin sleeping in his seat. In Western culture, three or more Zeds together are supposed to imitate a snoring sound. Then Snowy thinks. I don't know why, but I've got this feeling our trip will come to a bad end. Now, let's get this right out of the way. This is a terrible page. It's poorly drawn. It's hard to distinguish what people are saying compared to what they're thinking. We're given no hints how the bomber knows Tintin or even how close they are located to each other. The third page, Tintin wakes up, completely unscathed, as the train cars around him are completely destroyed. 
He then gets stopped by the Russian police. It's a terrible first impression for the character, but he proved to be popular enough for the readers, so he was brought back to go on more crazy adventures. The art quickly improved, making Hirsch's style one of the most recognizable ones in Europe. Hirsch was known for making very detailed and grounded backgrounds, which looked almost realistic compared to his stylized cartoonish characters. The other problem with Tintin and the Land of the Soviets was that Hirsch only read one book about the Soviets before writing the comic. So, his description of the country is very inaccurate and acts as shallow propaganda against the Soviets. It was the follow-up adventures of Tintin that made the character famous in European popular art circles. I'm going to jump ahead a few years and look at what Hirsch did once he smoothed his technique out. This is the story of the Blue Lotus, and the story starts out in India. It was printed in 1934-35, to but the book takes place in 1931. Right away, we notice some significant differences. The most notable being color. The panels are more detailed, with more lines inside each of them. The background is very detailed, even though the characters don't interact with most of it. This gives the illusion that Tintin is living in a fleshed out world. There are more noticeable character models. Tintin looks like a young teenager compared to the adults around him now. He's smaller than them. The other characters have beards, which emphasize the difference in their age. Tintin's eyes are represented by dots, but one of the Indian's eyes have dots inside a white area. All the characters are highly detailed. Another thing we notice is the action. While the explosion on Tintin in the land of the Soviets only had people walking about, this scene shows a lot more motion, without anything really important to the plot happening. The entertainer dances on glass, sits on spikes, and stabs himself multiple times, but he is uninjured. So even though what we see should seem gruesome or violent, our minds don't register it as such. The page adds an ironic joke when a cushion hurts the entertainer. All this is to get and keep our attentions until the entertainer reads Tintin's future. Using the technique seen here, have made the act of Tintin watching a performance more interesting than him surviving an explosion on a train. The story goes on to deal with the current events as Tintin witnesses the Japanese army blowing up the railways, giving Tintin a feeling of real-world importance that many artists were missing. The art style Tintin became known for was coined as Lean Claire, which is French for clear line. This is when the lines of different thickness are used instead of cross-hatching to show distance. While inking is used to show shadow, those shadows are minimal and downplayed. We see the shadows on this page in the broken glass and the performer's loincloth. Tintin continued his adventures as a reporter until the Nazis occupied Belgium. What he did after that will be taken up in a future video.